Hello, my dear listeners, and welcome to another episode of The Flow Great Show, where I'm seeking out high performers out of various fields to inquire about their methods to reach the state of flow in their lives. For those who don't know, flow is the optimal state of consciousness, where action and awareness merge, where time flies or slows down, where your ego vanishes and where you feel the most alive. So far, I've had biohackers such as Dave Asprey and Timo Arenon here, Hollywood actor Brandon Routh, CrossFit legend Stephen Kotler, Pavlok founder Manish Sethi, and several others. And today is no exception. I have another wonderful guest, my dear friend and super sweetheart, Nelly Latinmacki. Nelly, please excuse any mispronunciation. Nelly is one of the most positive people I know and a wonderful Finnish entrepreneur who came up with two co-founders with the U app, which teaches its community how to live healthier and happier through micro actions. Their partner is actually Jamie Oliver, and they give small little actions to people, challenges to live healthier. For example, you do you take a shot of a healthy meal or you do a two minute workout or you take a photo of your daily calendar of what you want to achieve that day. So this episode is about habit change, about why it's so important to love yourself. And it's also about a micro action that I'm performing and you will just love it. It's super positive. Nelly is great and enjoy this episode with Nelly Latin Mackey. Hello, Floor Grade Nation. Welcome to another episode of the Flow Grade Show. Today with the fabulous Nellen Lachtenmacki. Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. It's Friday evening. <laughs> We are here actually at 500 Startups, where you right now work, work with your startup. And, yes. And you are part of... Uh, are there actually 500 Startups here? Yeah, so basically 500 Startup is the, is the program kind of accelerator that our startup took part. It actually officially ended last Friday, so a week ago. So we recently graduated. Uh, but <laughs> we're still here, like many many are of our batch mates. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like, are there really 500 startups? Is it or is it 497? I think there are actually more nowadays. There are more. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's just the brand. But we're in downtown San Francisco here. It's a really nice space, you know, as you expect in Silicon Valley, mm. uh, pretty much for the startups. And mm. you are here, but you're not actually from here. And that's how I want to start this. So you are here now in the Valley doing a successful start with Jamie Oliver. And uh, however, I'm sure that this is not the beginning of the story. So I want you to tell me where did it all start? Where are you from? Give me your pitch. <laughs> sure. So. <laughs> So I said, I'm, my name is Nelly Lähte, I'm from Finland, like uh, all of my, my teammates. So um, we started our journey actually many years ago, like the, the entrepreneurial you know, journey. So uh, this is our second startup um, in the kind of health and mobile health scene. And uh, the first one purely focusing on behavior change. And um, I wow. can give some more info on the on the kind of the companies uh, a little bit in a little bit. But I myself, I'm, a, I'm an engineer by background, uh, uh, educated in Finland, but have lived three times in the Silicon Valley. So for the first time I was doing my master's the thesis here for a big company, after which I realized that I wanted to, you know, come back to Silicon Valley, but not work for a big company anymore. <laughs> okay, understandable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then <laughs> I, I later applied to, to this um, kind of like very you know, high-tech infrastructure as a service, private cloud software company called Eucalyptus Systems, worked there for a year after which I, I couldn't help, you know, hold myself back anymore. I had to go back to Finland and start the first company with, with my co-founders. Very cool. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's actually where we met. I mean, this is mm -hmm. uh, at a Quantified Self Conference, and I remember you just started Health Puzzle. Yes, our and, first company, yes. And uh, yeah, and we connected right away, and we had a really, uh, do you want to tell the story about that evening? Where <laughs> And it's all legal because of the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was, but obviously, like you know, we both have been super excited about quantified self and what you know the future of mobile health and health technology. So I guess that was the reason why we both were there. So you were with you know your you know bio tracker. That's right. Yeah. Exactly, and Still I was bio -tracker. Like, yeah, exactly, and 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 I was there through the health puzzle. So like what health puzzle was then focusing on that you know the first companies was 
providing people with personalized recommendations. And it wasn't app based yet, right? It was uh, a website. It, it, it was an app, app basically, consumer oh. app. And how would we get to that personalized recommendation is through combining data through different sensors and trackers, and all the way down to your 23andMe genetic data, in order to you know give that personalized recommendation. So that was our quantified, like hardcore heavy lifting quantified self, you know, phase of our you know startup <laughs> life so far. So and many of my co-founders uh, now with you app were also co-founders. Of, uh, of health puzzle so and that was the kind of that was when we met so obviously quantified self conference Amsterdam it was a you know yeah. <laughs> it was a great conference and and, and a, you know great people and great party as well <laughs> yeah and then the after party was really nice because we went to a bar and, and, and uh, with Timu Arena who was yes, also on the on yes. the flow grade show before yeah and with and with, a... with Mikko Ikola from from Amber and, and that's and, right and, you know yeah. so like so many of these health people hackers. who are health hackers who are <laughs> passionate about the, about the subject yeah. so that was a great meeting of minds in many ways <laughs> and you get the Finnish delegation then invited me to uh, dinner yes and actually that's when I first pitched my idea for biotracker mm. I just remember now didn't no way I, I was actually uh, talking about that with demo that um, I was asking for feedback and I got so great feedback from you guys in, in such positive ways that I said I, I'm gonna pursue this because biotracker was just an idea then so mm -hmm. I haven't hadn't founded the company yet and everything so the quantified self conference in Amsterdam was I think my launching pad. That's brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. So, you are here now, and you're very much uh, into habit hacking mm -hmm. or um, micro actions, actually. Yes. So this is what your app is about. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe before digging into the specifics of the app, uh, what f for you is uh, a habit and a healthy habit, actually? Why, why is it important? Mm. So in a way, habits are like the autopilot of our lives. So we do a number of different actions, you know, and, and behaviors during the day, and about forty percent of them are habits. So an autopilot. You don't have to think about it. Your brain just, you know, is resting, you know, at that autopilot. You're just doing it automatically, and some of those habits are good, and kind of, you know, good for your health. Some of those habits might be bad for your health <laughs> and obviously like you know the whole you know I think that habits building and habit hacking is about obviously you know understanding and getting an you know overview of and touch to your current habits in order to be able to you know tweak them and change them and um, and obviously there are many ways to approach it um, uh, we're doing it with a with an application some people just you know you know, start doing it, you know, with the with the little, you know, journal that they start, you know, repeating a certain action that later becomes, you know, a habit when your brain gets how, how difficult is it to build a new habit? Well it depends. It depends on the on the action that you want to build a habit around. Say uh, like we're actually working with a very like an amazing neuroscientist called uh, Tara Swart who's one of a, a one of our advisors at at UAP, and she always says that you know some habits are you know, fair, you know fairly quick to formulate. So if you keep you know keep it small, keep it uh, concrete, and you keep repeating it, uh, you know you know for you know it, it's debatable if it's 21 days or 28 days. Like it actually sticks and it becomes a habit. But some but something bigger, some, such as learning empathy, <laughs> it's not a micro action. It's it's a bigger change. So it might take like a year for people to learn habits. For empathy, which is a bigger topic, obviously. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> is that, yeah. So, but it, you can basically change your life through changing those small habits, it's which a, is pretty uh, mind blowing, isn't it? It's a yeah. really interesting field, I think. Yeah. And yeah. I think sometimes, it, I, I know there's a study by Nike that they showed that people who track their runs, yeah, I think five times, then they're, I think, thirty percent more active after that. Already, they build yeah. some sort of habit. Mm -hmm. So five times tracking a run yeah. in, in that sense, I think activity is I think fairly easy probably to mm -hmm. develop a new habit. But then there are other, like you said, with empathy, that, that's probably really hard. <laughs> exactly. Because you kind of have to tweak your personality, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's it's kind of a bigger topic. Yeah, you're absolutely so. right. Yeah, but and then there are like like different fields of our well-being where such as eating is such an important one. Obviously, we all know the power of you know um, of the eating choices that we make 
to our health is massive. And, you know, we make, you know, there are like hundreds of, you know, eating related, uh, you know, decisions made during the day. And some of those decisions, decisions are made not by you, but somebody else that you go to a restaurant and somebody else had made the decision, you know, of, you know, that the portion size is this big or this big. Ah, you know, that's so really interesting. You know, like, you know, the size of the portion, is, et cetera. So somebody else makes the decision. decision. So actually, with, it, with related to food decisions, actually, it's like up, you know, 10 to 15, you know, decisions that you make yourself per day out of the couple of hundreds. So it's, it's good to understand these kind of things that, you know, affect your your life <laughs> and yes. make you decide and you know what you decide most definitely yeah but how do you get control over something that you can't really control like a portion size in the restaurant well that's something obviously that it's not your choice obviously you can be what you can tweak in that sense is your awareness your kind of mindset of you know paying attention to the portion size so you might Otherwise, leave something for behind example, for example or exactly. ask for no bread <laughs> exactly you know mm-hmm. those kinds of things but obviously, like there are many things that you can deliberately affect yourself, but especially related to food, according to research, like, you know, you're, there are 10 to 15 of those decisions you do yourself and then, you know, additional 100 that are kind of, you know, you don't either pay attention to or are made for you, which is interesting. Yeah. So how, uh, let's take one step back. Like, how did you get interested in habit building and how did you figure out that it was so powerful for yourself maybe and then that you made it into a company? Yeah, so basically it was actually a long journey. It's not just me, but it was our team actually that because we ca- we came from Nora the, and Alexi. Nora and Alexi, so my brilliant co-founders. Uh, so it was a kind of a long journey that we started as a quantified self app with uh, focus on tracking and, and and kind of aggregating tracker data in order to provide the personalized recommendation. But we figured out two things. First of all, the market at that point, a couple of years back, was not big enough. So uh, it was very narrow, like very, uh, very highly motivated, specialized people who were doing the tracking thing. And we wanted to, wanted to have a bigger impact. But most importantly, we figured out that uh, actually, you know, um, rather than going deeper to the quantified self, we actually figured out that there's something, one thing that we need to fix or uh, figure out first. And that is the behavior change layer, the actionification layer that's often forgotten. People are given uh, data, even some insights on data, but not necessarily help on building you know, good habits or building some, you know, making those make, make actions, those healthy small t- steps that stick with you. Create context pretty much with the data for you to actually change something. Exactly. And not give, only showing actually, you the, the lab report and exactly. say, okay, this is exactly so. And so instead of just you know looking at the past you know performance through data, like giving like we figured out that it would it would be very important to actually give some concrete actions. And it was actually our product uh, head Alexi who was the first one who got this like oh dear like behavior change. We have to focus on behavior change, and uh, and that's how when the kind of change process for us as a company we call it pivot <laughs> started and we we started to focus fully on the behavior change part. And it kind of decided to drop the data and quantify, you know, quantified self side for, for a little while in order to focus only on uh, you know, the mechanics and the psychology and the neuroscience of, of behavior change that then later resulted in, in what we know, now know UAP. <laughs> the UAP, yeah, and we're gonna yeah. have a look at it in, in a second. And before we have a look, uh, I also I want you to tell me the story how you got uh, one name uh, on on your team, which I think everyone probably knows, uh, who, and, and who, the the famous cook yeah. from Great Britain, Jamie Oliver. Yes. And how did that happen? <laughs> so I guess that was a that was a meeting of minds, so to say that that we actually got connected through our uh, investor Wellington Partners, who are a UK based. Uh, venture capitalist company, and uh, and uh, our partner there uh, knows Jamie from a long time, uh, and he knew that Jamie was passionate about the same question that, like, he's giving lectures to, you know, and educating hundreds of thousands and millions of people around the world and evangelizing on happier and healthier eating, but he had noticed the same thing that, oh dear, like you know if 
nobody takes action on this valuable information. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so he w he had the same kind of problem that how can we turn you know help people actually take action? So when we met, we were like, okay, great. <laughs> Jamie has fabulous content around food. We have a digital platform that's only focused on helping people take action and change their behavior. So we kind of decided to start working together. That's and fantastic. Jamie and Jamie's one of our brilliant action authors. So the micro actions that our app gives uh, are always authored uh, or hosted by somebody. So Jamie is one of our action hosts. H has he actually cooked for you as well? <laughs> <laughs> We've definitely tasted some some of the stuff. So we, uh, especially during the um, you know during during the spring, we were in London almost almost weekly. So we uh, you know undoubtedly got to get to taste some awesome stuff at the office. Well, it was the greatest over. thing you've yeah. tasted. <laughs> well, there were different like so many good things. Like you know there were some cookies and then some salad and some you know, like so many so many different things. Always some of them were you know cooked by Jamie. Some of them were cooked by his food team. But that was the like they have such a fabulous organization focused on you know changing the world and making the world a happier Very healthier cool. place so it's it's a great you know great partner for us is he, is he as positive in person as he comes across on totally television? <laughs> yeah. he's brilliant he's like yeah. so like everybody loves him <laughs> that's us really included cool. and he's yeah. exactly as he kind of seems to be no i think he fits yeah. in your I, I know your team i don't know him but like i think the way you describe him he fits perfectly in your dynamic yeah yeah, yeah well, definitely and it's been a pleasure to work with him and he's his lovely team. Wow. Actually, how many action authors do you have? Because you were talking We have about a, around a dozen, uh, around 10 uh, action authors at this okay, point. So wow. hosting actions on food, uh, on mindfulness, on productivity, on, uh, on movement and micro workouts and, and, and things like that. And we're now actually expanding you know, the, the action author uh, uh, groups. So we're going to take many more you know, in the next very cool six months so it's exciting well let's dig in and have a look at this app <laughs> sure actually all right so welcome to UAP UAP is all about taking small actions to a happier healthier you and the way we approach it is that UAP gives daily small actions on mindfulness movement mm -hmm. food and and love and love being more about loving yourself and the people around you rather than relationships let's say and everything centers around what we call the do view. Uh, and here are all my open micro actions. Uh, today's action of the day is from the mind category is review your next two weeks. An action always have, has the... Um, I completed that one actually. Exactly. <laughs> we can take a look at it. It has a um, you know, picture, the title, and then a little you know, text that exam, you know, uh, tells what this action is all about and why it is it is important. This one is authored by Caroline Arnold, who is an author of the book Small Move, Big Change, which is a behavior change and habit change book. Mm -hmm. um, she's brilliant and she's hosting productivity actions for you app. So this one, review your next two weeks, is from the productivity category basically. And the actions are completed with a picture. And why a picture? Because it makes the, uh, the behavior more deliberate. And accountable mm -hmm. and it leaves a lovely trace so here you can see uh, you know thousands of people completing uh, this These are the people you follow right now or? Uh, this is everybody in the community who have an open profile so we can open uh, you know one of these posts from quick BC Boxster and then you can you can like them you can comment on them you, you know there you can just engage with the community uh, you know uh, say a couple of encouraging words or you know ask questions Very which cool. people do a lot. So yes. we go back. So you you uh, encouraged me already after completing my app. Exactly. I uh, immediately my, my, did that. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And there are you know many different kinds of uh, you know micro actions open. So here, like yesterday's action was stand up, which is a very you know simple movement related uh, <laughs> micro actions. <laughs> micro action. Maybe for some people it might be quite hard. Exactly. And in addition to the daily changing action that we call action of the day, we have, um, you know, what we call keep it up action, which is like the habit creation action, uh, which is actually something that you that stays here every day and that you can pick, you know, whatever is relevant for you. For my, for, you know, my pick is too many workouts. So for a busy mm -hmm. entrepreneur, this is brilliant. <laughs> whatever you do, however busy you are, do a too many workout. 
<laughs> and actually, we're gonna do, do too many workouts in just a bit. So what? yeah, exactly because like I already it, worked out. Too. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do too many workouts. You can do oh, it, babe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously here again like you know you can you can complete it with a with a picture but this is my one of my favorite hacks it has actually helped me a lot that you know even especially when you know the going gets rough it's an entrepreneur's you know usual week you're you know it's a lot of work a lot of meetings a lot of stress and you think you can't you know find time to work out at least do this two minute workout oftentimes you end up doing a much longer one right yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, but we should definitely do this. You know, right now? my favorite is two minute plank. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three, ah, go. Okay. All right. <laughs> no. Okay, why we do that? You can tell me about. Like, what do you recommend people uh, to keep doing this? Like when they fall off the wagon. Yeah, that's a really good question. Actually, that's one of the points of of micro actions that they're so small. Uh, and easy to do that anybody can feel successful with them. It's easy to do by anyone. So, uh, <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, and like for example, uh, that's one of the points of, of, of you up and the philosophy and the science behind it that you can't fall off the va wagon. If you skip a day, if you skip it two days, if you skip a week, your score is not going to be zero because there is no score. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So if you, um, you know, it's just, you know, um, you know, everything you do is positive. So uh, it's easy to come back, <laughs> so to say. So that's the kind of the power of micro action. And that's actually something that, you know, the same, uh, you know, one of our advisors, actually Caroline Arnold, who actually hosts today's action of the day. So the two, you the know, two minute the, plank. This no, not, not the, right now. <laughs> You're doing great, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we're actually doing a you know two minute plank in a podcast. I know, but <laughs> I'm sweating so bad. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that is CrossFit today, guys. <laughs> That's true. So, what is it, the most successful user stories so so far that you have come across? Yeah, that's a good one as well. So basically, we have success stories from uh, like all the different fields of health. Uh, one of my favorites is maybe this lady from. Uh, <laughs> Let's have a five minute, five, five, 15, 15 seconds pause. <laughs> Not yet, you have to say it. 10, 9, 8, <laughs> 7. Guys, this is harder than it, it sounds. Two minutes doesn't seem very long. But... And done. Yes. <laughs> Good job. We did it. Boom. Perfect. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good job. Good job. <laughs> thank, thank you for giving me another workout. <laughs> yeah. I get don't get that many here in San Francisco, actually. <laughs> That's the power of, you know, it was only two minutes, right? Micro workout. Only two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the power, right? You know, that's how we like it. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. So now we've done a micro action. Yeah. Uh, we've looked at the app. Um, we know you guys have a lot of users. Mm -hmm. What is the science behind the whole idea behind micro actions um it is actually the whole the concept of you up the, the content of the actions it's all based on the learnings from neuroscience and psychology so um it's actually very very interesting and i'm so happy to share this with you guys so, yeah very cool so first of all listen like, up <laughs> listen up so first of all if we look at you know before going to the science let's first look at why people fail in behavior change endeavors so usually people suck at lifestyle change like if you look at people who do a new year's resolution more than nine out of ten fail it's a lot right you know nine like out of ten really more than nine out of ten that's why fail. the gyms are always so empty in march <laughs> that is exactly the reason 100 <laughs> percent. so there are four reasons why people usually fail in behavior change the first first one that uh, is that they change too many things at once and do, they don't make it concrete a good example is a New Year's resolution. Like on January 1st, uh, you're like, this year, I'm gonna be bikini fit by, uh, by June. <laughs> and that's a high level goal. It's a big goal and not very concrete. Or then another, okay. another one is like, you know, I'm never gonna eat sugar again. Like bullshit. Like, you know, you, if you, you <laughs> deprive yourself like that, it's gonna, it's, it's such a big high level goal, not concrete. It's gonna hard to be, it's gonna be hard to keep up with it. The second reason is that 
Uh, weirdly enough, we've made so many of these New Year's resolutions and, and goals in our lives that we are sort of primed to fail. We're expecting to fail because we've failed in the past. So it's kind of at the back of our heads, we're like, yes, we're going to try again. But at the same time, you know that it didn't quite work the last time either. <laughs> but, you know, so it's, we're primed to fail. That's another one. Third, we don't actually have the skills and tools for behavior change. The majority of today's health and wellness apps and services are not designed from a behavior change perspective. And people don't necessarily know what those, you know, you know, the, the small things are that they should be doing in order to achieve their goals. Mm. And fourth, and this is very important, our environment doesn't necessarily support the behavior change. So you might be excited about your new project, but your life partner or your you know colleagues or whatever surroundings or your you know you know your surroundings don't support it yeah this yeah. is actually i think a, a huge problem for many people especially not, not only the significant others but at work when they want to eat healthy but the whole group is going to the, the fast food place next door exactly exactly and, it's, a, it's yeah. a huge problem exactly so um so how do we tackle then you, with you how do we do it so actually uh and this is very interesting uh UAP, the whole thing, the core of UAP and how we onboard people to the UAP, it actually doesn't start with the habit building, like, you know, pick an action and pick, her, pick a habit and then repeat it. No, we actually start a level deeper, what we call the process of self-affirmation, which is a process of cl clarifying and being more aware of your values and living up to those values, who you are, what's important to you, who are the important people in your life? And, and these kinds of actions, like say, when you onboard to the app, there is a bunch of uh, what we call starting actions. And one of them is, for example, who Ho makes you happy? Not the plank because probably... <laughs> That's not a self-affirmation action. You're absolutely <laughs> right. But... Uh, the, but quit, of, the quitting percentage might be quite high if that was the first action. <laughs> no, totally that. Oh, and you can do like <laughs> for two minutes, it. you can do whatever you want. But anyway, like, so, so actions that are, you know, you know, around self-affirmation and kind of, you know, help you uh, kind of become more aware of who you are and what you are and what, you, what your values are. And this is actually based on psychology. And, um, and, and there's this, you know, one form of therapy that's called acceptance and, and commitment therapy, ACT, uh, that actually has awesome results of people who have been, uh, gone through the process and started the process of self-affirmation. Those people are actually primed to change much better than people who didn't do the self-affirmation process. Wow. So like the new habits and skills that were taught to people who have, you know, who are more aware of their values and the, you know, themselves and being more comfortable with who they are, uh, get much better results on the habit building side. So that's this, this is so fundamentally important. So after the self-affirmation thing, so obviously like, like you have has actions for the self-affirmation, such as the, who makes you happy, Part of part of the starting actions, or uh, what is your goal, Max? You know, what is that? You know, what are you wanna? What do you wanna strive for? You know, these kinds of actions are you know self affirmation actions. Um, then the next level is what we call the skills and habits, and mm -hmm. this is uh, you know you know skills for happiness, for example, like you know you know mindfulness actions or and then you know good habit skills you know getting more aware of the bad habits that you have in your life and bringing in new good habits such as for me the two minute workout is one of my new good habits i want to do it every day because no, it's kind of you know it, it, actually it's great i'm joking around right now but it's <laughs> no i really think just a two minute blank I, I i feel it i feel it and too I, have, I consider myself an athlete <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's a good, you know, good two minute, you know, little habit, you know, to have. If you don't know anything else, do two minutes of something. So, you know, enabling people to learn new habits and skills through micro actions. And then the third layer is the community layer, which we bring through the social, you know, aspect of UF. So people liking and commenting and, and cheering each other on. And the community is actually super important as well. I said, a good example, you know, other than UF is the, what we often say, the, the you know, the AA, the Alcoholics Anonymous. So mm. 
that, that's a great ex- example of the power of community and the change of environment to support your behavior change project, uh, process. So basically what AA does is that for people who have uh, a problem with alcohol, instead of going to the bar, they go to the meetings because that's a change of environment. They have this group of people who support you know you you can talk about it you know it's it's a great alternative a great change example. of yeah. environment that supports your new positive behavior of in their case you know getting rid of they don't alcohol. go to the bar they go to the meeting exactly it's like the old anonymous alcoholic saying uh, if you don't want to slip don't go where it's slippery exactly i, I love that saying it's Ex- perfect example exactly mm-hmm. and and what we can obviously looking at the neuroscience perspective and you know how brain adapts new habits uh, that's why we you know make you app actions small so there are micro actions not macro actions so small easy to do like complete you know anybody can do them that's very important uh, second one is that we help people focus on them and we help people also repeat those actions which then you know help create the neuro kind of neural connections in your brain and, and eventually build them into habits you know that stick so that's that's how you is built so basically but the one thing that i really want to point out is the importance of the first layer that we talked the self affirmation because that is something that not very many services today do they jump directly to the ha- skills and habits so hey take it you know take it take an action and repeat and it becomes a habit but actually you get much better results if you help people be more uh, comfortable with who they are you know help people be being ac- be accepted the way they are help people to feel that they are enough they can do this i love that <laughs> and yeah. that is super super important this is yeah. also that's such a positive aspect because i think what we are faced with in the health industry is Uh, we make people feel bad about themselves mm. because we project this image of what they could reach mm. but very few people actually get there quickly exactly it takes time and and it, it takes failure as well on the mm. way you know exactly. you always i don't know you end up having a bad day and then you go to the ice cream shop and you you get mm. the muffin with double chocolate fudge <laughs> uh, fried <laughs> dressing exactly. something like that so yeah. yeah so i think it's it's important that that's okay And actually, in that sense, I really like there's something called laughing yoga. I recently heard about that in Los Angeles. Wow, I haven't heard of it. What is it? For example, they would come together. One person at the conference was explaining that to me. And then someone would eat a cookie. And instead of like, then you was would it feel a normal bad. cookie? Yeah, a normal cookie you know, with sugar. <laughs> But then instead, people would just laugh at the situation. So everyone would just laugh and say, ha, ah, you know, you messed up. You ate a cookie. <laughs> And it's a, it's so they would deal point. with failure through laughter yeah, because everyone does it. You know, comedy is about people. Oftentimes, it's about people messing up, yeah. making mistakes. Mm. And but we are so hard on ourselves when we make a mistake mm. by our, when, when you're by yourself and then I don't know you drink a soda even though you you said no sugar today mm. and then you beat yourself up over it. But yeah. it's not so bad after no, all. No, no, no. And that is you're absolutely in the very core of you know of what we want to also kind of what we are standing for because. Like, like it all starts with your mindset actually like the the micro actions in your mindset and how you live and do decisions is the most important thing say for example somebody who has a say you know weight problem is gaining weight it might not you know necessarily even be a uh, you know it, actually the biggest problem may may be just the fact that he or she uh, you know is is not you know comfortable with her you know, him or herself, or is moving, you know, or it's he, he, he or she hates movement or, um, or, or fitness or exercise because her, her kind of experience from the exercise has been that she's, she's been doing those workouts because she hates her body, not because she loves her body, you know what I mean? So there are like, you know, these interesting things that, you know, actually many of those changes start in your head. And the one that you just said that, uh, like people feeling guilty of doing, you know, eating sweets or something like that. That is like the most, at least from for myself, actually, personally, one of the best micro actions that have that has changed my life is exactly that. I stopped feeling guilty of, you know, if I wanted to treat myself, I 100% enjoyed it, every taste of it, and felt <laughs> great afterwards. And 
you know, the change is that this wasn't the case always. I'm one of those, you know, you know, formerly I used to be one of those insecure overachiever ladies who, you know, try to control their eating and, and, and you know, restrict from, you know, from sugar and all these kinds of things until I realized that that's a losing game. Like it's, it makes your life miserable and you, you end up, you know, being, not being, you know, health, you know, balanced and healthy. But that's one of the kind of, you know, the great hacks that, you know, if you feel like, you know, the basis of your, you know, of your diet should be, you know, in good shape. And if you feel like, you know, eating something, you know, good or treating yeah. yourself. Stepping you should, out of bounds. Exactly, you should one. enjoy like 100%. And this is like, a, this is a mental uh, micro action for me, the change, micro change in my thinking that has huge benefits to my, you know, has had, you know, huge benefits to my life for the past 10 years. <laughs> Fantastic advice, I love it. No, yeah. I think it's, yeah. it's a huge step. And I, I love the self-affirmation part mm -hmm. and about the app. And I, I really think I can only recommend uh, to anyone, try it out. Um, if you're interested in, in habit and behavior change, mm -hmm. want to find the best version of yourself and mm -hmm. find more balance in your lives, give it a try, it's really, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that. Change of gears. I think we've covered this part quite well. So if people have questions, obviously they can reach out and totally. to me and then to you as well. Or they'll find their information on the in the show notes. Yep. But now, uh, from an entrepreneurial perspective, mm. uh, you guys, you found the startup, and now you're. I think you have momentum. Mm -hmm. So, you, what are the challenges right now like what, what is the biggest challenge for you guys right now that you actually have users um, that that use the app and they're more and more coming uh, what has changed from being a small startup mm. but just playing around with ideas that is such an interesting question in so many levels so I said like we are we now have hundreds of thousands of, of registered users, which is a great, we've kind of gotten the startup off the ground, which is a great thing. And especially in the, in the consumer mobile space, which is, you know, it, it's a space with a huge opportunity because you all, you know, you're distributing via platform that can, you know, access, you know, <laughs> you know, hundreds of millions of people or billions of people. So it's, it's, it's a huge opportunity, but at the same time, consumer mobile is a very, challenging space because there are a lot of apps a lot of competition you know how do you get you know yourself seen in the app store you know how do you you know raise awareness how do you get people to download it how to get people to stick with it how do you get people to stick with it with a long you know wrong, long run there are many kind of you know variables that we need to worry about and take care of obviously all the time so like for us as a young startup, we are, you know, we, we're building a behavior change app. So for us during the first, you know, this year, so we launched this year, uh, this spring in, in 2015, uh, the, the core focus has been in, in engagement and retention. So making the app engaging and something that people want to stick with, something that people feel that gives value to them. And we've been very successful in that. So the engagement and retention numbers look really good. For example, our active users use our app on average four times a day, which is a high number. Wow. Yeah. So that one we've been very successful. And next phase for us is that we need to get from hundreds of thousands of registered users to millions. And that is kind of the next change of gears, you know, for any mobile startup. I know like if there are mobile entrepreneurs, you know exactly what I mean. That you kind of certain amount of your downloads come from you know your content partners, and some of them come from you know organic sources, and some come from referrals. And you try to kind of work all of those things to you know to build more momentum and 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 uh, you know bring more, bringing more users. So to answer your question, <laughs> growth. We've already been growing pretty fast, but we need to you know we want to grow faster to get this. To the hands of millions as yes. soon as possible. At the same time, re retain and engage the people that are already using it. And you're doing a exactly, and we're not doing any job. paid acquisition at this point. Many startups do pay paid acquisition, meaning that they're buying users to their app. But uh, but for us, because we, you know, that would kind of be like, like why would we do that? Because for that, they those users would not stick with the app. They would just download it and and then off they go. So we are kind of. We want to have quality users, <laughs> people who actually, you know, relate with this app and, and can feel, you know, very uh, cool, you know, useful. And, 
so uh, throughout this whole process until now already I mean, you must have learned a ton of things mm -hmm. but if you could give yourself let's say two years ago mm -hmm. one advice what would it be um like even though I, we'd be really brave like be even braver and think even bigger and be a little bit you know, like like we've been growing you up in in very in a Obviously, we're first, you know, almost like first time entrepreneurs. It's our second company, but it's almost the same journey that we're yeah. still in. That obviously, like we've now learned more about growth hacking and, and making, you know, uh, you know, you know, the product more viral and the, those kinds of things. So I, I guess I would, you know, to the product itself, I would like that's a good question. What would we do, do differently? It's maybe like we would just be, you know, braver <laughs> in and more in, you know more courageous, which we have been, you know, obviously. Maybe get out of Finland a little bit earlier than we did. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, it's Finland is a great place, but for consumer mobile, you know, the best no. mentors in the world don't live in Europe, unfortunately. They live here in, yes. in the Silicon Valley. So get out of Finland. And, uh, and obviously there are some, you know, pretty practical, pretty, you know, tactical, you know, growth hacking, uh, advice that we've learned or, you know for example here that we would could have maybe thought earlier but this is called learning yeah <laughs> and, and you know sometimes i think you can't speed up the learning curve you, th th there's only so much you can learn in a certain time exactly and uh, if you have maybe more money or, yeah. and more mentorship you just make bigger mistakes mm -hmm. uh, but you sometimes you can't speed it up mm -hmm. but then when you actually know where you want to go then mm -hmm. it can really help you get yeah. there quick exactly so, uh, but the, the iteration process, I think this is just imp important. That's what I learned for myself. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, totally. But awesome. This is, I mean, you guys, you got to yeah, have a, a bright future. <laughs> very sure. That's what we hope. We have a big mission. <laughs> okay. I think you've covered many of my questions. I have a couple more rapid fire questions. Let's do it. For people to get to know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nelly Platt and a little more. So, what TV show are you watching right now? Are you watching any? I'm not watching any. I haven't owned television since, like, ever, actually. When I moved back out of my home, out of my parents' place, I, I never got one. Okay. Yeah. Good. But I do Then do you read? To, I do read, read something. Uh, some, you know, more kind of work-related books, maybe, like, from... What's the know. most impressive book that you've read recently? So um, <laughs> one that's, you know... Where you can remember the time. <laughs> <laughs> hard things about hard things. I think that was such a good one. You know, for, it's about entre entrepreneurs. It, uh, it's uh, it's about, Ben Horowitz. Ah, Ben yeah. Horowitz, yeah. Yeah, that, and that's a good, you know, it's kind of a tough story, but it's, there are so many uh, things that I can relate to, obviously. Uh, uh, yeah, I, but I it's... I parts of it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a great read. Exactly. So, for example, that one was, was a brilliant one. And, and then obviously we have... You know, we're reading books like, you know, Caroline Arnold's books, like Small Move, Big Change, all these kind of, you know, the kind of behavior change books that are just brilliant and, and that some, you know, have some really good extra information for people who are hungry for, for more information on, on behavior change. So Very cool. we can all, I can send a list of those, you know, the best <laughs> behavior change books to Max so that he can read. He can, cool. You know, no, I'll put them yeah. in the show notes, but this one is already great. I think one, yeah. that book uh, is, is your number one recommendation at the moment. Yeah. Hard things about hard things. Hard things about hard things. It's for entrepreneurs. <laughs> Fantastic. So what do you do when you when when you struggle when you're in the funk to get out of this? What is the one thing you do in order to turn a bad day into a good one? Mm. Really good question. There are many, you know, as many approaches as there are people. For <laughs> me, I I'm a very social animal, so I have a couple of really good friends who are smart and uh, like with great sense of empathy and, and, and just, you know, very well-rounded people. So usually I have a chat with them and explain, you know, what bugs me or what is the hard thing that I'm struggling with or our team is struggling with and just have a, to have a brilliant sounding board usually helps you know that's you know that is my approach some people be prefer to kind of sit alone and, and think and obviously i do that as well but i have a very kind of socialist part but I, I know that this person can help me he's a or she is a specialist in this so i'll i'll 
give them a call. So that's maybe one way for me to kind of think about it. Fantastic. Or then I go for a bike ride. <laughs> that usually helps. <laughs> that's what I, I would have assumed, actually, knowing you. Yeah. That you jump on the bike. Yeah. Or then I combine these two. So I take the brilliant person <laughs> Even for a bike ride with me and in San Francisco. That's just, day. you know, that's the best. Okay, that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. What's your guilty pleasure? Mm. Um, maybe. I'm, I'm kind of a you know, late night animal, meaning that you know, if I don't deliberately put myself to bed and sleep, <laughs> I'll, I can kind of, you know, you know, you know, my brain somehow turns on in the, in the evening, so it's kind of hard for me to stop. So maybe like, you know, staying up a little bit too late might be my guilty, you know, little pleasure. <laughs> but doesn't I, that surprise me after you came on your bike uh, to the club in Finland when, when I, I was in Helsinki <laughs> <Yes>. last summer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Here. that's that's one of my... Yeah. Animal of the night. Yeah. All right. Which person do you consider an idol that you're not working with, though? Mm. For me, the most inspiring people are people who, how do I say, are in the right place for what they do. They are passionate and they are realizing their dreams. That's kind of the high level description. It can be a, you know, I, I'll take it, you know, completely out of the box example, Sarah Kay, who is a, like, speaking, you know, she does spoken poetry. And she is a fantastic example of a passionate person doing exactly what she is sort of, you know, she wants to do in her own style and just nailing it. <laughs> so that's an example of a, just kind of a human state of, you know, when you see a person that, you know, that does exactly what she or he is supposed to do and, and, and just nailing it. I think that's, you know, in general, that's what's super inspiring. Obviously, then there are these, you know, massively groundbreaking uh, entrepreneurs like Elon Musk who are, you know, doing not only uh, they're doing the kind of the right you, you thing. You can just go name one person. Sarah Kay you already named them. Yeah, exactly. I, it's so, <laughs> because it's so funny because it's such a, it's kind of the, the overall um, kind of, you know, the, the theme, right? You know, or Elon right. Musk who has the, you know, yeah, you know the capacity and he's doing the right thing. You know, people who are doing also the kind of the right thing, using their powers and their, you know, the, the have, capital. Have you read the book about him? Uh, not yet. Not yet. No, Me, yet. I'm, I'm also starting. Right? Exactly. But, you know, for people who have the power and capital and they're using it to do the right thing, to do good, that is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty cool. Because you could as well take the capital and, and do it, you know, do something else. But, you know, there are many entrepreneurs who decide to pour their energy and their talent and their, you know, their, you know, their worth to building completely like world changing businesses, which is brilliant. That's if so there was important. a union for entrepreneurs, I would vote you for president. <laughs> would you? <Yeah>. Yay! <laughs> One vote. <laughs> so positive about, oh, that's so about this. Fantastic. All right. Next rapid fire question. Actually, this is the last question. So I've asked that to several people and I've gotten an interesting answer so far. If you were on a deserted island, mm. you had to go there, and you could only take three things with you. And one of them has to be a technological device, an appliance, mm -hmm. and one a, a supplement, and the third one you can choose. Mm. What would you take? So, um, technological device, and then a supplement, and then uh, what was the third one? The third you, whatever you want. Whatever I want. But the third one would be a, a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic answer. Without... Uh, I think no, nobody ever chose a person so far. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is the social person choosing. Uh, the technological appliance would probably be uh, a, a cell phone attached to some sort of, you know, power source mechanism, probably uh, solar. Uh, solar stuff. And then supplement would would probably be what what would I be deficient of? Let's take some you know some fish oil. Let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is I. Like, this is my you know. Is that actually now? I'm personally interested. But what do you take supplements? 
I do take some supplements like magnesium and D vitamin and some B vitamins and and I usually eat a lot of fish already, so I don't necessarily have to eat too much of those. Okay. Pills. Yeah. But yeah, but you know, as a but just the regular most common ones that were yeah we yeah. biohackers are deficient in exactly that's okay. that's that's a good question. I do go at least once a year to take you know the kind of the full but blood screening for different vitamin uh, levels to check, uh, you know, how am I doing, right? And uh, that gives me some advice on, on, on how, to, how to hack it. So, but I, I try to kind of, you know, obviously cover as much as I can through the uh, true nutrition, which is pretty good, and then have a couple of supplements to okay. boost it. Actually, I'm just thinking of one more thing that I've almost forgotten, which I wanted to show you that and uh, have your opinion on that. It's the five minute journal and mm -hmm. I got really excited about that yes. because I think it's what you've just explained to us that self affirmation is so important. Yeah. I think that kind of takes care of it. So what totally. it does, it uh, gives you a template mm. that you can fill out every day mm -hmm. with a, sometimes a challenge or a quote and three things to, uh, that you're grateful for, what would make today great, three things again, daily affirmation. Mm. And then at the end of the day, things that you accomplished and three amazing things actually that happened today and yes. then how could I have made today better. Uh, would that count as also, what, not, it's not necessarily, it's a micro action in it's a way. It's totally a micro action and it's, it's so funny that you're bringing it up because many people use actually you up to something like this. They, they pick, you know, something like, what am I grateful for? Uh, action as their keep it up habit action and they make kind of a little journal out of it but I think this is a brilliant way to do it and it also it makes it more deliberate because you are writing you know with your own handwriting it's your style your way of doing it. it's a little bit the same as the picture at, with, with you at, right mm. but yeah I think this is a, this is a brilliant way to to do it yeah so definitely that's and it. now bringing that up brings me to another point and that was not at all the last question before <laughs> but you're actually coming out with a book yes it's gonna come out this um, uh, 31st of, of December but it's gonna be called the you app book no uh, the book of you the book of you 365 uh, micro actions uh, for each day of the year and uh, it, it has a little bit the same style as this five-minute journal so it has you know, you know, room for your own notes and how you complete those little micro actions. So, whereas the U app is more of a social experience where you, you know, are part of the community and you guys are doing small micro actions together, the book of you is the more of a personal, uh, kind of a personal journal for you for yourself. And it's it's just so so much fun because actually the story behind it it was so so much fun because uh, actually. Uh, the book is pu published by Penguin Books, which is a huge, you know, book yes. publisher, and uh, and they approached us since one of their nonfiction editors was uh, and he still is a a an avid user of U app, and she was like, "We're gonna make a book out of this," and then she approached <laughs> us like, "Like, let's use the same content that you have already in the app," and that's how the book came about and we're very excited about that obviously very cool no, I'd love to also uh, once it comes out then you know uh, write about it on our blog and totally. uh, yeah that's awesome yeah. Uh, very cool that that'd be a great New Year's present actually for people totally to start off a new happier healthier year fantastic mm -hmm. Nelly lots of good things to come mm -hmm. thank you so much for this time here I think this was a lot of fun <laughs> uh, and I, I'm sure you guys took away quite a few things about micro actions and habits and and if you want to be an entrepreneur what what you need and I think a good dose of self affirmation is actually a good way to start totally totally and, and uh, then start building with good skills and habits <laughs> I couldn't have expected more even my core got, got strengthened today I got some some good green healthy tea so thank you thank you Max <laughs> We're out. We're out. <laughs> this is it with another episode of the Flow Great Show. Thank you guys for listening or watching. Uh, you just make us continue this. And if you like what you heard, then please make sure to spread the word. Give us a thumbs up or subscribe to this podcast. And I'd love to hear from you. Write me at hello at flowgrade.com with your thoughts or with your 
guests that you want to have on this podcast. You'll hear me next time. Stay flow great.